Hello and welcome. In this session, we will discuss the structure of a question and an answer. You can use this using a simple template. You can use this for articles that you read in the literature or when you want to summarize your own work in terms of a question and an answer. The essence of technical communication is essentially solving a problem. All technical work essentially is composing of posing a question and finding an answer to it. The question and answer can be structured in the following way. The question which is also sometimes called as an aim or an objective is essentially an interrogative statement. It is a statement in which you have some questioning word such as who, what, where, when, why or how. The answer is essentially something which exactly corresponds to an answer to the question. It has to be a direct answer to the word. So, if it is who, you, you need to say it is who. If it is how, then you need to explain how something is happening. If you find that the answer is not answering the question directly, all you need to do is to restate the question. Ultimately, you need to get the question and answer compatible with each other. We will see this with a, an example which can be composed in this template. You can use this template to represent any of your technical work. The structure of a question or the breadth of a question has essentially three components. The topic, the question and its significance. The topic is basically a broad area. It could be some keywords from the title. The question is essentially a statement, an interrogative statement as I said before, who, what, where, when, why or how. The significance is of two types. One could be a practical significance, the other a conceptual significance. A practical significance in the sense that it is useful for something day to day. A conceptual significance is something that by which it is useful to understand something else which may be useful in a practical way. So, it might not have a direct practical significance, but it has something which helps you understand something else which in turn may have a direct practical significance. It is to get a particular significance, you could ask yourself, what if I do not solve this problem? So, suppose you are able to answer the question, what if I do not answer this problem or you are presenting this problem to somebody and somebody asks you, so what? Why should I bother? And an answer to that will be the significance of the problem. Let us take an example. You could structure the question in the following way. The authors have studied dash, right? You have uh, explaining some work and you are writing it in the following way. The authors have studied dash, which is essentially the topic, broad topic in a few words, not a long lengthy uh, phrase, but just two, three words because they wanted to find out the question. So, it could be who, what, where, when, why or how. In order to understand some conceptual significance or in order that they want to apply it for some practical significance. Let us take an example. This is an example taken from the uh, magazine, science magazine Nature. It is a letter to a nature. So, you could summarize this article as follows. The authors have studied Martian landscapes, Martian in the sense of the planet Mars. So, they have studied the uh, surface of Mars. So, just the two words of the topic broadly puts your uh, audience in picture. Okay, they at least know okay, you are looking at something in astronomy, you are looking at Mars, you are looking at the surface of Mars. Now, to the question because they wanted to find out what some dark markings on the surface images were. 
So, they observed the pictures of the Martian surface and they wanted to see what those dark markings were. Now, coming to the significance. In this particular case, the significance is only a conceptual significance. Why did they want to study it? Because they wanted to understand the surface chemistry in physics, very simple. So, once you read an article, you should be able to summarize the article in this structure, the question. Now, comes an answer. Recall that the answer need to exactly answer the question, but it can be one step little more than that. The answer again has a structure. The answer has got again three important components. First is the claim or the thesis of the author. What does the author or authors find in answer to the question they had raised? And what reasons supports their claim? Reasons in the sense that there are some principles that are already known from the previous literature, which has led them to this claim. And finally, what is the evidence that supports that this claim is true? It could be structured as follows. The author claims that dash which is the hypothesis or the claim, which should be a direct answer to the question they started off with, because of dash. Dash again is a reason or a principle which is known from the existing literature, which is based on dash, some material evidence. Either they have conducted some test or they have looked at some uh, analysis or they have solved some equations and so on. So, for this paper of nature, you could summarize the answer as follows. The authors claim that the marks are due to liquid brine flows. Remember what the question was? What are some dark markings? The answer is the dark markings are because of liquid brine flows. So, the question and the answer directly match each other. Now, coming to the second part, because why do they think that this is the answer? Because the patterns appear to be seasonal between liquid like flow and solid like frozen state. This is something which they know from previously existing literature that liquid brine could have liquid and solid like states depending on the temperature. Now, what is the material evidence that they have got to prove that this is right? Which is based on the surface temperature and possible occurrence of salts which can absorb water. So, those are just details, but essentially there is a claim. Marks are due to liquid brine flow. Why do they think so? Because the pattern appears to be seasonal. And what is the evidence? because the surface temperature and possible occurrence of salt. So, this completes a fully stated question and an answer. You need to memorize this. The question has got three important parts, so does an answer. The question has T Q S, the topic, the question and its significance. The answer has C R E, the claim reason and evidence. You will find this when you summarize a paper in this way, you will be able to come back to it to understand what they have already done. It is also important that when you practice to write others paper this way, when you write your own work, you will be able to summarize your own work in this way with a question and an answer. The content of this session has been taken from this book by Booth et al from Chicago Press. And this is a very wonderful book and you get Indian editions in very uh, reasonable price about 500 rupees. I would recommend that anybody who is seriously interested in writing should read this book. This is available in most Indian stores. Thank you for listening.